Men and brethren, what you've just seen me do, leave the podium, begin to walk around, is one of the major things that each and every one of us is required to do. You can't continue to sit at the ivory tower and expect things to happen. You must leave that spot and then go out there and make what you want to happen to happen. You can see here a full mix of the predominant singing sets. I don't know how you are going to distinguish them if they have to sing without their uniforms. The only thing that shows that these ones are Ghanaians, these ones are Nigerians, even the Nigerians have different sets is that they are wearing a uniform. Yeah, uh, thank you. I want us all to pay attention, listen to them. As we are listening to them, we are beginning to put our house together and everyone is getting into the house. Yeah, and see, what I said, it's here, what more of the vision could be MIA. Then it's your face, it's your one. Over here, you're trusting to that person. No matter how I cry, I know that you're watching me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're sure your tomorrow is going to be greater than today? Are you sure? Are you sure? You are looking at it personally. But we are looking at it as a church. Yes, sir. We are looking at it as a body. Hey, remove this hand if you can. Try. No way. Try. Not possible. He can't. Who can remove one part of their body without pains? None. The instrumentals that you are hearing. They make a symphony, they have a good harmony. Why is it so? Because they have an agreement. Now listen very carefully, something is gonna happen right now. Drums. Drums. Just go on, just go on. Just play anything. Just play anything. Play anything. Go on, go on. Go on, go on. Blow anything. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. How many of you are enjoying it? How many of you are enjoying it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How many of you enjoyed this one? That is the current state of the church. Sending out disconnect notes. People from every part of the world looking up to the church, listening to the church, and yet they can't get a message from the church. We are not true to ourselves. We come in here and each and every one of us is
pretending. I am going to talk to you as a prophet. And I will not spare anyone here. Hypocrites sitting in here enjoying music and yet in your heart you are having grudges against someone. In your heart you are feeling terrible because somebody else is here. You are not happy that somebody else is sitting here with you. What are you calling yourself but a hypocrite? The church of God should be a united body. The church of God should be one fold, one God, one gospel, one baptism. But we have made it the church that is mine and yours and theirs. The church of God is not your church. I tell you, it is not your church. I hear people say, my church, my church. It's not your church. What did you do to get the church? Did you die for the church? My church. My message to you all is very plain, straightforward, and clear. I want you to listen to these beautiful voices one more time. Then I'll go up to the podium. And as you listen, ask yourself, Am I living true to my faith? Am I living true to what I profess? Am I living true to what the church of God should represent to the world out there? Am I cornering the church to myself? Or am I releasing the church to the owner of the church? And if you are not releasing the owner to the church to the owner of the church, I implore you, as these voices are coming out in sweet melody, repentantly tell the owner of the church, I am sorry. And I am ready to give up this church unto you. Rule, reign, do as you want. That is what my message is going to be. Thank you. Master Mwami, best of the time, any you are hiding out, any say. Before we now, see, you know, as the is going to end, you're going to form a team. Ghana, Nigeria, Ghana, Nigeria, Ghana, Nigeria. Before we close, we are going to set ourselves from that end. Ghana, Nigeria, Ghana, Nigeria, Ghana, Nigeria. Ghana, Nigeria. Hmm? I, hope I hope you got it. So we're going to form it from there. So he knows. So we're going to form ourselves. You'll see. Ghana, Nigeria, Ghana, Nigeria, Ghana, Nigeria. Okay. Until we form the third thing, they will go right round. By the time they go towards the end of the music, they're going to dance out this way, forming themselves into Ghana, Ghana. Amen. Before we sing that song, can I just say the one thing that says, Let your be love shed amongst us. Let there be love in our hearts. May now this love sweep the nations. Cause source of love to arise. Give us our strength. Understanding of brotherly love. That is real. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love. Let there be love shared among us. Let there be love in our hearts. May now this love sweep the nations. Cause us, oh Lord, to arise. Of brotherly love, that is real. Let every love shed among us. Let there be love. His hands are not shot, that he cannot wish to you.
We have made the horse the horse shoe shape. We have made the horse shoe shape. The horse is the animal that we have always used for travels, for journeys. Are we ready to wear the horse shoe? Because we have to. There is no choice again. I'm going to bless you all. And I am sure I am blessing these folks here with the blessings of the church. And with the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Don't run away because we still have work. When I, when I finish blessing you, I think we have to find a beautiful place where you will stay for me because I will need you all through this message. You're blessed. You're blessed. I'm you're blessed. 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 you the Association of Sabbath Keepers and the Seventh Day Church of God. With much appreciation for the honor to address you on the subject of unity. I want to address you on a subject of which you are so very familiar. And so well versed. Yeah, As a prelude. I would urge you all to please consider the scenario where it will be that every one of us that came here with a grudge, a bias. A hurting feeling, a sense of disaffection. If every one of us with that type in our hearts took the chance to resolve here and now with a pledge to let that resentment die eternally. <laughs> That will be a great gain for the gospel. And the actualization of the ministries of reconciliation. It will also fall in line with the prayer of our Lord and Master through the ages. My mandate is to discuss the importance of the subject of unity in the body of Christ. Nothing can be farther from the truth than that I have the one that infallibly does justice to this, save the word of God. I 
Please pardon my attempt to be as realistic and as frank as possible. The time has come for us all to face our reality. The time is here for us to face and acknowledge our shortcomings. And then to resolve to be true to him who has called us. The call of which we have been we have pledged ourselves to obey. The major scripture text for my discussion is John chapter 17. But if you have time, you can also look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 and verse 13. Then go back to Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse 4 to verse 6. You will see from these texts that Jesus, the Christ, has broken down the walls of partition. In such a way that you do not have a distinction between a Jew and a Gentile. If the partition between Jews and Gentiles could be removed. How much more removed will the partitions be for us? Unity has enjoyed a great deal of analysis. Dissection, conferences, prayers, writings, and what have you. Yet, it appears to be eluding the body of Christ. I want to request that we consider simply this body of Christ to be the church universal. It is not just one microscopic part of a part of the body. I don't know if you got me. I said, let us not just look at it as one microcosmic part of a part of the part of the body. You have to believe me. The church of God in all its ramifications take all the factions put together take all the divisions put together take all the factions that are following one or the other thing put the whole in whatever designation church of god seven day seven day church of god church of god in nigeria church of god in ghana international church of god put all of them together we form just one little infinitesimal point in the body of christ have we recognized that? How many are we? How many are we? 
What is the population of the world today? Nigeria alone boasts of over 200 million people. Even though official statistics says 180 something million. How many of all of these form members of the body of Christ? Do we have statistics? Church of God, do we have statistics? Do we know how many we are? We can't know how many we are. Reason. As somebody said, we are too preoccupied with ourselves. We are too preoccupied with checking out who we are. I have heard of pastors who don't know that their members are ill. I have heard of pastors who don't know that members of their church do not have a job. I have heard of pastors who don't know when the members of their church have stopped coming to church. I have heard of church leaders who will only know a member who is able to buy a pair of shoes for him. Unity. So much has been said about unity. Unity is one subject that we are experts in discussing. We write about unity. We hold conferences. Perhaps now is the time for us to admit that we are yet to accept the importance of unity as a demand worthy of our adherence. Otherwise, yes, sir. if you permit me to ask, why has it seemed so impossible and impracticable to be united? Even as little and sub-microscopic as we are, we find it difficult to unite. It is not as though we don't know that the body of Christ needs to come together. It's not as if we don't know that the head of the church prayed earnestly that the body comes together. The petition Jesus made that was recorded in John chapter 17. That is what qualifies to be called the Lord's Prayer. And what is the substance of that prayer? That they should be one. If that is the prayer of Jesus, and we want to be centered on Jesus, then the knowledge we have of Jesus praying that the body should be one, should give us every reason why we should be one. Men and brethren, even in this knowledge, we find occasion to be disunited. 
And I dare challenge us to give an answer to why this is so. Why is it so that we are not as united as Christ wants us to be? We teach unity and yet do not find it any hard at all to be contrary to our teachings. Judge our actions. Our inactions, our words, and on some occasions our silences. Don't they cause disunity? If that is the truth, what will the designing observer call us but hypocrites? <laughs> Men and brethren. You will not like the synonyms of the appellation hypocrites. Let me just give it to you from the English language. Charlatans. Frauds. Phonies. Dissemblers. Double dealers, pretenders, whited sepulchre. Who will want to be called these names? I'm not sure any one of us here will want to be called such a name. How far then from the truth is it that we are called hypocrites? When somebody calls you a hypocrite, there must be a reason. You say one thing and you do the exact opposite of what you have said. Then you are a hypocrite. If you choose not to be a hypocrite, then you will be critical of your public and private presentations and dispositions. Let me just ask us, do all of our actions point to the facts and reality that we consider unity in the body of Christ to be important? Should this unity not be more important than our positions? Should this unity not be more important than the status we care, we have, we care about? Should this unity not be more valuable than what people will say about us? Should this unity not be something worth pursuing at the expense of pride and power? Must pride and power be allowed to override the cause of Christ for the unity of his body? Since we already know so much about unity, we should challenge ourselves to do as we say. And I want to stress the importance of unity. Failing to do this, we qualify on all fours to be called hypocrites. Jesus referred to such hypocrites as whited sepulchre. Unity is central to creation. 
In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Creator said, Let us. Unity is the bedrock of the Godhead. It is the only ground upon which the church can be true to its founder and its mission. It is the mark of identity or belongingness to the body of Christ. You can confirm that from John chapter 17, verse 23. If it were not gravely vital to the master, he would not have laid such emphasis on it in his teachings and in his prayers. Any action we take or fail to take which works contrary to the unity of the brethren is a work against Christ. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 stands against dividing the brethren. And Romans chapter 16 verse 17 says such folks should be marked and avoided. No one in his right frame would want to be marked out as a separatist. A division monger or an agent of disunity. Yet, yet the history of the churches of God is replete with such personages, both dead and alive. Instead of resisting them, today, you find people who are exalting these division makers. And towing their lines against Christ Jesus. I wonder what the end will be like. If unity is taken as important, we will resolve today to do everything even the ones that hurt us to achieve it I dare say that such a move will make the church Christ centered I don't see it otherwise the importance of unity cannot be overemphasized. Unity promotes cooperation as in a football team. Look at the Look at a football team that is not united. They can't score any goals. And they will concede so many goals. Unity makes a people effective as the sweeping effect of a broom. Locally here in our African culture, we have what is called the broom. In the Western world, you may have forgotten how to use brooms, so you now have what is called sweeper. So, if I give you one broomstick and I ask you to sweep this place, you 
I'm sure your labor is going to be very hard. That is how it is. When you form part of a body, and you choose that you can be a lone ranger, your labor is going to be very hard. And that is what the church is suffering today. We have too many lone rangers. A lone ranger running a cause that is beautiful and beneficial. Without support. Will find it very difficult. Unfortunately for our lone rangers. As they run. There are others that are putting studs for them. It's not as bad as when you are running on your own. To now have studs put on the way for you, hurdles. We can make it easier by putting our forces together. Unity supplies strength as in the construction of a house. When you are constructing a house, you will need cement. You will need blocks. You will need iron depending on the type of structure. You will need roofing sheets. You decide to use just sand to build your house. I wonder what type of house you will be building. The sand is important. The cement is important. But when you remove them and separate them and allow them to run on their own, you achieve next to nothing. Men and brethren, unity provides a platform for the continuity as in standing as a people. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Even God acknowledged that a people united can hardly be deterred from achieving their goal. Genesis chapter 11. Men resolved, and look at it, if you read it there, you will see, they said, like God, let us. Conversely, Jesus stipulated in Matthew 12, 25, that a kingdom, a house, call it a church, divided against itself, that is one that is not united, can hardly stand. Yes, you come with your walk and say, if you are here, and now they are from a story, ah, I don't know what you see, you know, what's it? It's a million of times. This division can come in so many different ways. Sir, and Papa, I'm going to be able to walk out with your breath. Just because I don't like the way you sing. And now I'm saying, I'm going to ask you to know, I'm going to ask you to know, I ignore the fact that you are a very active and effective evangelist. Just because I don't like the way you wore a particular shirt, I ignore the fact that your heart is such a beautiful citadel of love. Ah, 
These petty things are the things that are causing disunity amongst the body of Christ. I have been doing my studies. I have checked out several countries. Not only my country, Nigeria. I have identified some items that have caused disunity amongst the people of God. One of the hallmarks of disunity which undermines the growth and development of the church of God is the apparent lack of cohesiveness and agreement in the pursuit of a common goal. I want to do it this way. Somebody else wants to do it some other way. Why must it be his own way? And not my own way. We want to do the same thing. But we have different approaches. Why, why can't we allow the diversity that exists in the body to thrive? If everybody is thinking alike, it means somebody is not thinking. If I am thinking and you are thinking, then we have a rich resource. We can now put all our ideas to make something beautiful. If I am the only thinker, then every other person that is aligned with me will become a fool. But nobody is a fool. No, nobody is a fool. We must allow everyone a chance. In our disunity, we begin to set up rival organizations within the organization. And we begin to set up cliques. Caucuses. We begin to align ourselves with ourselves. And this works contrary to the promotion of the unity of the body. It is time to end this unnecessary rivalry. We must bring it to an end. Grudges emanate from rivalries. Pride and ego tripping emanate from such activities. Enough, enough of my lamentations. <laughs> I have some recommendations. I recommend we start being united from home. The home is the first unit of the church. Our collective unity as husbands and wives, as parents and children, as brothers and sisters, as leaders and followers, as followers amongst ourselves, as leaders amongst ourselves, will to a large extent mark the sustenance of our faith in a world full of hatred. The world is full of hatred of the truth. 
time no kureno. But the world loves the promotion of everything that is ungodly. We should in unison be able to get our children and youth to be proud of what we believe and champion. The, the discussion we were having earlier today on how to bridge the generational gap between the ancient and the modern is very instructive. I might have gray hairs, but I'm a youth at heart. That is one secret that enables me to mix with the youths. I go with them. So I understand their slangs. I speak their language. So I am able to pull them where I should. I have been begging pastors to buy mobile phones. I said I've been begging pastors to buy mobile phones. When I say I'm begging them to buy mobile phones, I'm sure you understand what I mean. It's not, it's not as if they don't have, but they don't have the ones that they can connect to Facebook or what's up and then the children will be there in the church holding their phones you quote a portion of scripture that portion of scripture you have quoted is right inside that handset with them. And they are able, able to open it and read it. And then we get angry. There are churches you will go right from the gate. You will see the picture of a mobile phone with a very big X on it. Now, what that means is, if you are used to this, then don't come here. How many people do you see carrying the big book called the Bible? When what is inside that big book is already inside this handset. We should learn to move with the times. I am discussing our unity. This is just one aspect of our disunity. In my studies, I have found that our youths are leaving the church. They are not leaving the church because the church has the truth. They are not leaving the church because the church is fine. They are leaving the church because they don't belong to the church anymore. The church is more ancient than modern. Perhaps we should go back to the era when we have to keep wearing our petery yeah. that we tie on our waist. I went to minister somewhere. I didn't have a coat, a jacket. And when it was time for me to minister, they announced me. As I was coming up to pick the microphone, somebody halted me. Where's your coat? Where's your coat? I said, I didn't even come with one. Ah, it's okay. Please let the choir sing. Let the choir sing. Let's go and get him a coat. So they started running around to look for a coat for me. And I told them, don't bring me coat that somebody has worn. 
And whatever coat you give to me, I'm not returning it to you. Time was going. They left me. Gave me microphone. Men and brethren. In that assembly. We are people that have been separated for 15 years. Two women, one married to a husband that belongs to this group, the other to a husband that belongs to this group, and these two women were sisters, the same mother, the same father, but they couldn't greet each other. 15 years. And that was because the two groups we are not in terms. If they had died before that meeting, I wonder what would have happened. That is the bad side of disunity. We must unite. If we don't unite, time is running out. We cannot receive our Lord Jesus if we are not united. When he returns, will he find us faithfully united as he has prayed? We must unite now in preparation to welcome our Lord Jesus who is coming again for the harvest of a church without blemish of disunity. We cannot afford to keep the Sabbath and do all the things that we do only to be turned away as workers of iniquity. In Luke chapter 13 verse 27 some people will meet Jesus on that day and they will tell him I, I held big crusades in your name. I called coordinated massive conventions because of it. I preached in several countries in your name. And he will say, get deep behind me. I you have been a worker of iniquity. And such a person will be surprised. By the time the records are played over for him. Or by the way, for her. You will now find out that it's just because you were an agent of disunity. Being an agent of disunity can deny you a chance with Christ when he returns. That is why unity is important. Let us unite now. For the salvation of our children and the youths. These youths and children are already grossly dissatisfied with the extent of our knowledge that is empty of practice. When we take our children to schools, we are looking for admission for our children. You go to the school and what they are using is blackboard with the chalk. How many of you will put your children in those schools? Today, if they are not using whiteboard and marker board and marker to use, 
and yet, what do I do? A fita, a moa, dear, and it is what? And it's a woman who got on as well. Then they are using the interactive board. Now, Omu, you have Fadibia, a betimini, and Colano Edin Kutaho. Why are we still depending on the blackboard when you have the interactive board? And then, see, any award at the Papa or Nomin can say, I dare any other than one. Our youth will not be proud of that. And so you are disuniting them from the body of Christ. There are places where you will go and then there's a screen. You quote a portion of scripture and the screen shows it. You have a large crowd, people can't see the man preaching because he'll be looking like an ant before them. They put large screens left, right, center so that people can see. Are you saying that our youths don't like such things? Even you don't like such things. Even you, you don't like such things? We should grow with the times. People think that Facebook and the internet is evil. But that is the platform upon which people like me are preaching and winning souls. I don't say anything apart from the gospel on Facebook. Every day I post the devotional on Facebook and on other media. My readership in the world is now 10,000 plus. Are we up to 10,000 here? Every day I reach them. Yes, there is good and there is bad in everything. There are people that use this microphone that I am holding now to sing wrong music. To teach evil. Should we say because they are using it to teach evil, we shouldn't use the microphone again? What are the things that unite us? Can we look for those things that unite us? and then begin to copy those things we must unite now in order to complete the process of working out our salvation with fear and trembling there is no better time to unite than now who is coming with me Anyone coming with me? Anyone coming with me? I am looking towards a united church. Are we ready to unite the church? You want to come with me to unite the church? Let me see you on your feet. I, I am asking for only those that are interested in the unity of the church. If you are not interested in the unity of the church, please don't bother standing. Can I have my group, please? Because our tomorrow is surely going to be better than our today. If we say, Please, I want to advise us. When we talk, many times we begin to compare ourselves and we are calling the names of other churches. No, 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 no. Something better is here. Let's compare ourselves with ourselves.
We must compete with ourselves. We must grow beyond the paces that we currently are in. If I am at level one now, I don't want to know what the other person is. But I should set my target to grow beyond level one to level two. That is the way to go. Are we ready? I am going to see when my team sings how we are going to pull ourselves together. When I think that the day is far spent, beautiful, we are ending the Sabbath in this beautiful note. You are a Ghanaian, we will sing a Nigerian song with a Nigerian language. Don't worry, you will get the interpretation. You are from Burundi. We will sing a Ghanaian song in the Ghanaian language. Don't worry. You will get the interpretation. I know those from Australia, from Jamaica, from the UK. Jamaica, Australia, any UK. English is your own. But we will sing in our own native tongue. And tongues are given for us to edify ourselves to. Let us not be too bothered. I have in my hands a book that was launched at the last year's Association of Sabbath Keepers Conference in October last year. And it is titled John 17. His prayer, my body. And it's written by Dr. Patrick I. Oyinkari. It is also given out for free. I am going to give my able interpreter one. I'm sure he hasn't got his, eh? Yes. The remaining three. I am going to give to the representative of Zone 5. And he will know how to distribute it. There is going to be a revision of John 17, his prayer, my burden, by the grace of God this year. So if you want a copy, you can ask for it. Just let us know that you want a copy. And we'll let you have it. I thank you all for standing up because I said you should stand. I have a mandate to make people united. I go to churches where they remove shoes, where they don't allow shoes to enter. I go to churches where they wear garments. I go to churches where they burn, they do burnt offering. Why do I do this? Jesus told me that if you don't go to them, how can they know? I hope that I am recruiting all of you that are standing here. 
For those of you from Nigeria, I am pleading that if you are not yet a member of the Association of Sabbath Keepers, please make yourself a member. I thank the Ghanaian brethren who have started their own process as well. I know that the Kenyans have also started their own process. Anywhere else that you want to gather these people together, please do so. The Association of Sabbath Keepers is individual based. Because we have found that leaders of groups are the problem that we are having for the purpose of unity. So as an individual, you can be a member of the Association of Sabbath Keepers. Then we also have group membership. But group members cannot vote or be voted for. For example, if Church of God Seventh Day becomes a corporate member, your representative will be your representative there. We cannot vote for Church of God Seventh Day to become an officer. We can only vote for an individual like Kofi Maxwell. That way we are able to enter into all the organizations without restrictions. So while we sing, I want you, please, if you know that there is one person you need to reconcile with and the person is here, please walk up to him or her, shake hands, embrace and say, we will walk together. Make that commitment and it shall be very well with you. Can we raise, can we raise our right hands up? As a pledge that we shall be united. We want to be united. That is why our hands are up. Father, recognize all these hands that are up. Make everyone here a unity instrument. Make every man here a champion of unity. We are praying this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, you're right, you're too much, 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 you